Hello, welcome back to the channel guys, I'm EVM and today I want to talk about these things, electric cars and how they compare in terms of price to their petrol equivalents. It's a very crazy time at the moment in terms of new car prices, used car prices and manufacturers have told us for a while now that the price between electric and petrol is narrowing. They're coming down and by 2025, they've been saying this for you know, a few years now, the price should be almost identical so there is no premium, as it were, to get an electric vehicle. So I thought I'd look at the market again to see if we are actually narrowing the gap. But before I do that and go up to the whiteboard of truth, of course, I want to just recalibrate people's expectations or thoughts on how much a petrol car costs today. Because it really took me by surprise when I looked at just two very common cars and had a look at their starting list price which quite frankly, well, once I pick myself up off the floor, I can't believe we're in this state at the moment. It's, a, it's just bonkers. It's really a mad place to be. Let me start with Ford Fiesta. I think most people are familiar with that. It's a relatively small, cheap entry level car into the new car market. I've had one myself, although not new, and I think most people would be, again, familiar with what it is. What do you think that starts at now? So the starting price of the cheapest Fiesta they do. By going onto Ford's website, clicking on build, what do you think it starts at? You're probably wrong. The cheapest Ford Fiesta, entry level, is well over 18,000 pounds. I think it's 18, three or four. And that's just absolutely crackers. Well over 18 grand for a Fiesta. I don't care if it's slightly bigger than it used to be. It's a Fiesta. Another one, which again, I think I need to tell people about so they recalibrate what things cost is the Golf GTI. A very well respected, very good hot hatch. Lots of people have had them in the past, lots of people own them. That starts, what do you, well, what do you think that starts at? Again, you're probably wrong. £36,150 or something thereabouts. Over 36 grand for an entry level, no options, Golf GTI. So, now we've kind of moved our goalposts in terms of how much petrol cars cost. What are these doing now? And again, we need to go upstairs now to the whiteboard of truth. Okay, here are the vehicles that I've decided to compare. You may see a similarity in all but this at the bottom. Essentially, the only true comparison isn't going off uh, something like a Tesla Model 3 versus some version of the BMW 330 or 335 or 330e, because there's always someone that say, well, it's not quite the same because of X, Y, and Z. These, however, are almost completely comparable because it's the same car but with a petrol or an electric engine. Kia e Nero, that's the, well, they just do a hybrid upwards version now, so standard uh, self-charging hybrid, as they call it. Uh, the petrol ZS versus the electric one, the C4 versus the electric C4, and so forth, E208 versus the 208. And down here, the BMW 430i and the M440i, they're both petrol cars, versus the BMW i4. I'll explain why there are two petrol versus the electric later on. So these are all list prices, um, and I will put them up here and compare them so we can see how much more they are, because I'll say it now, they are more expensive when it comes to list price, but again, it's not the complete story. I'll tell you what I mean by that later on in the video. Right, let me get the prices for all these, and we're back in a second, because I'm not prepared. Now, in terms of specifications, I've made these the same. So this is the Kia Nero 2 versus the Nero EV 2. Same with the Citroen and the Peugeot and the MG ZS. They're the same spec level. However, there is a discrepancy when it comes to the power output of the petrol versus electric uh, motor, I suppose. And that's pretty much the same across the board. For example, the Kia e Nero uh, is, I think it's about just over 200 brake horsepower, whereas the only petrol engine you can get in their uh, self-charging hybrid, I think is about 140, 50 brake horsepower. Same with the Citroen, the electric is more powerful, 
E208, I think you're looking at about 110, 15 brake horsepower for the petrol versus 140 odd for the electric. Um, and same with the ZS, it's a lot more powerful. So although I'm not gonna change the prices, these are more powerful engines. It's like a third more in terms of BHP. That typically would come at a slight premium. If you had a, a Golf that had 110 brake horsepower and then looked at one that had 160 brake horsepower, you would be expected to pay, what, another grand or two for that. But in this case, I'm gonna keep the prices as they are, even though the EV does come with, and not just power, sometimes there's a few other little things like a bigger screen internally that you don't get on the petrol engine. So it is a little bit biased towards the petrol um, versions of these. Now the MG ZS, the petrol version, this is the more powerful petrol engine one, even though it's still not as powerful as the uh, electric motor, that is £19,795. Remember, these are list prices. Uh, the EV version, that is £29,495. So clearly, that's significantly more expensive. Not far off £10,000 more expensive, and again, not far off 50%, no, 40 odd percent more expensive. Let's see if that trend continues. The Kia Nero, in fact, let me fill all these in for you so I don't bore you too much. There we are. So, Kia Nero petrol slash hybrid, 27,745. That is, the, they don't do a standard pure petrol engine. Uh, it's just a hybrid or the EV. 36,245 for the electric version. They do a, a plug-in hybrid as well, but that's kind of in the middle and I've ignored that. So again, there's a sizable increase between the electric and the petrol. EC4, again, just over £7,000 extra. Peugeot 208 to E208, once more, we're at a significant amount. These I will come back to later because I want to explain it more in detail. So I think the pattern is clear. Electric vehicles are certainly more expensive by a considerable margin than their petrol or hybrid petrol for some of these counterparts. Uh, diesel about the same as well. Typically just a little bit more expensive than their petrol versions. But it's not as straightforward as that, is it? I've had a look for the Kia Nero versus the Kia e-Nero when it comes to a three-year-old car because it's been out a few years now. It gives us some good data to look at on the used market because yes, initial purchase price is a major sticking point. I am not naive to that fact. If you can't afford that, then it doesn't matter if it doesn't depreciate at all. You can't afford it, you can't buy it, it's irrelevant to you. But if you can afford the extra deposit or monthly payments or just pure list price for the electric compared to the petrol, you'll probably find that it's actually cheaper to own. When it comes to brand new cars, the greatest cost to anyone is almost always depreciation. You buy a car for, let's say, £30,000 and it's worth £20,000 in three years' time, you've lost £10,000 in a depreciating asset. At the moment, the used car market for petrol and electric is astronomically high, as well as new car prices going up as well, which has made the problem even worse. But that has meant, because electric vehicles have always held their value a lot better than their petrol counterparts, that again, it's not as straightforward as that. So the Kia Nero, the petrol version, is going for it around three years old, a 2019 model, and it's the same spec of four, so it's the top spec version, for just over 20,000 pound, between 20 and 21,000 pound. That's the cheapest ones I could find on Auto Trader. The electric Nero, so the Kia Nero EV, the cheapest 2019 versions of those, and they're all the top spec ones as well, they're around, well, close to 30,000 pound starting price. Some are actually above that. So you can see that, yes, they do cost more, but they depreciate far less. As a point of comparison, the launch edition, the 2019 e Nero costs £32,500. They are still selling for almost £30,000 three years later. The petrol one, that's gone down by quite a lot more in terms of, well, thousands of pounds more, quite frankly. So if you were to sell both of these cars after they were three years old, you would get a lot more back from the electric. Therefore, the total cost of ownership is significantly less. Then factor in, for 99% of people out there, much cheaper fuel costs, then factor in cheaper 
tax and servicing and all that sort of cost as well, which electric cars at the moment currently enjoy. And again, much, much cheaper to own. You have more money then to put towards your next car, if that's the sort of thing you do, you get the three year renewal. The used car market is, as I said, in extreme flux. It's, it's crackers at the moment, so who's to say what's gonna happen in the future? But electric vehicles are very much in demand. Supply isn't anywhere near what it needs to be. And of course, that's just gonna make the prices go up even more. Just again, to put a uh, bit of a comparison out there, my Model 3 Standard Range Plus cost me just over 40,000 pounds. I think it was 40 and a half thousand pounds. And two and a half years later, and 35,000 miles piled onto that car, I could sell it today, genuinely now, if I sold it privately anyway, and I usually do, for more than I paid for it, for about 41, 41 and a half thousand pounds. I could own a car for three years, or nearly three years, and make money on it. And this isn't a special car, it's not an exotic car, it's just an electric car. An expensive one, granted, but it's turned out that that 40 grand car is the cheapest one I've ever owned. It won't stay like that forever, of course. The fact that the Model 3 has gone up nearly £10,000 in list price over the last three years has obviously had a major effect on the uh, used car prices, and that won't carry on for long. I'm hoping they're going to stop now and not going to get more expensive. But ultimately, it's that sort of thing you need to take into account. You don't just look at these prices and go, it's too expensive, I'm walking away. If you can't afford it, then yeah. <laughs> You have to walk away. You have no choice because if someone says, well, I can just about stretch to the finance for £21,500. 30? No, no way. I mean, I can't believe, even though it's been a few years now, that I bought a car that's worth over £40,000. It's just, it's something I never considered before. The, cheap, the most expensive, sorry, car I'd ever bought, new or used, before that, that Tesla turned up, what, nearly three years ago now, was I think 16 and a half? That was a brand new car. It, it's, it, it's the way the world is now. Everything's far more expensive. We need to recalibrate how much stuff costs. And um, yeah, I think we've conclusively answered that. Now, I want to just do this BMW comparison as well, because this is the sort of thing which is quite difficult and divides the comments. The BMW 430i has got quite a bit less power than the i4. So the i4, I think, has got 340 brake horsepower. The 430i, uh, which is the most powerful version of the four series that they do before you get to an M. Uh, I think has got 270 brake horsepower, 260, something like that, which is why I've included the BMW M440i. That has 370-odd brake horsepower, but it is an M-badged car. It's not just an M-sport trim. So if I'd have compared it against that, then people would have complained, well, that's an M car, it's an M440, it's got more power. If I'd have compared it against that equally, it's not the same. That is far more powerful than that. So let me put the prices of both of these up and then the i4 so you could just see a very close example, but which is why it's quite difficult to actually see if a car is genuinely more expensive than their petrol counterparts. Because I suspect BMW have priced it, so there is no direct comparison. Let me just put it up for you. Right, the 430i, and this is all the starting price. Um, same spec level, trim level for the ball, um, as, as close as you could get it anyway. £46,100 for the 430i. Again, if I compared that against the i4, which is 54, well, call it £55,000, that's like nearly nine grand more expensive. But it's got more power, it's got things like air suspension, a stand, it's got other things as standard that that doesn't, so it's not a great comparison. The M440i, you could say, again, it's been breathed on by the M division, even though it's not a proper M car, and it's got a slightly more power, but it's more expensive. That is more expensive than the i4, even though the power, there's only about 30 brake horsepower in it, about 10% difference, that being the quickest. Now, I'm not comparing an M440i with the i4 M Sport. They do an i4 M50. <laughs> but that starts at 60 odd thousand pounds. So again, I think BMW have done this deliberately. So it's up to you which you want to compare it against. If you think that the i4 with its power and its spec is closer to the 440i, the M440i, sorry, then it's actually about the same price. I would say that one is very different to drive than the other and it's not quite the same, but to a lot of people it would be. So I guess it's not always the case that for a comparable model, you are paying more for electric than petrol. 
I've done this uh, video, albeit several months back, for lease cars to see if electric is uh, more expensive to lease than petrol. So go and look for that in the channel. Please do subscribe. It does help. It's what sponsors take uh, kind of notice of. So please do subscribe. And if you want to click the join button, there's a link in the description below where it takes you straight to how to join. For 99p, you get exclusive videos just for members only, as well as stuff like this nearly a week before everyone else. So thank you for supporting the channel if you do that. Thank you for watching this if you don't. Either way, I'm happy. So there we go. The answer is yes, they're more expensive, but as they're worth more later down the line, they're also not. So like everything in life, the answer is it depends. So I'm done. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Oh, the light's just gone off and uh, I'm, I better end it there because I don't know what's going on. I think we've got a power cut. <laughs> Bye, guys.